So I'm going to show you how I set up my iPhone to do the meteor shower. Um, I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, but I'm going to show you how I did it, and then you can judge whether or not it's worth doing. But um, I know that I can do this with the Sea Star because the field of view of the Sea Star is so small that my odds of catching a meteor in that are fairly slim. And so I wanted to do it with my iPhone. So I went into the camera mode and I know that I can't just record forever or I'm going to run out of memory. So I did it on a time lapse. And what I did was, um, I'm gonna do it inside so that you can see the difference in the field of view because right here in the center, right above the red dot, I can change that to a half of a view to a full view. And so I knew I wanted to get as much in there as possible. So I knew I was gonna set it to the half. And so I set it to the half. And then up here at the top, there's a little arrow. And if I click on it, it turns yellow. And then it opens up this dial down here and it lets me change um, the exposure right here. The, and so, I knew that I wanted it to do the biggest exposure I could get because I wanted those meteors are going to be flying by the screen really fast. And so if I put it to, so the exposure is very dark, my odds of catching it are slim. So I put it on a positive two right here. Let's see. I'll close that. So I put it at a positive two. And then when I was outside, I just clicked in the center and then I changed this brightness dial up to the top. And then I set it up on a selfie stick and I put it outside and I turned it on. And I recorded several different sessions, uh, but these are some of the images that I was able to capture. So this here was my first attempt I'm setting up. You can sometimes see a light flash, but you can see the corner of my house right there. I just wanted something for reference when I was setting it up so that I knew if I was pointing even at the sky or if you could see anything at all. And now I'm just kind of trying to adjust it and then reaching over to push the start button. When I was reviewing the footage, it was sometimes hard to see them, so I will add some arrows to kind of point out some of the things I saw through the night so that you can see where to look. The noise on the images is pretty high, so it was kind of hard to see things. That's why the arrows are helpful. Um, you can see the rotation of a star that is constant. You can see it rotating through the night. I'll have to point that out when we get to there. In order to see some of them, I had to do them frame by frame. And so it was a little tedious to make the recording, but I hope you enjoy. There were certainly more than the arrows that I'm pointing out, but I'll let you look for those additional ones. Now, when I was recording these, because I was recording them in a time lapse, they are just going to show up as blips of light because the time lapse is really just taking one exposure per second rather than the 30 exposures per second that a video would take. So it's only capturing that, that one exposure per second. And so it's going to just show a blip of light because the motion would have happened with 30 exposures instead of just one. And so they're going to show blitz of light. I think maybe what I'll do tonight, if the skies cooperate, is I will put it out again and either try some slow motion ones or just some regular video on them so that we can maybe see some of the shooting star kind of effect. We'll we'll see how it goes tonight. If If it goes well, I'll add it at the end of this video. But these are the time lapses. This is the stationary star that you can see rotating through the night. If you watch that one, it travels along the arc of the uh, rotation of the Earth.
you can still see the stationary star as it's tracking through the screen throughout throughout the night. I think I'll do the slow motion or video on a separate video just so I can get this one out in case anybody else wants to try this on their own tonight. I'll get it published so you can see how to do it. I hope you enjoyed this little look into the meteor shower and how to use your iPhone to capture it. Thanks for watching.